Two full spots of video from the Flash movie were released, but they raise more questions than they provide answers. But we do our best to respond to some of them, such as the controversy surrounding Michael Keaton's portrayal of Batman. What else is there to say about the movie The Flash after all this time? Batman v Superman. Dawn of Justice was first revealed prior to its release, and even before Ezra Miller became a media star for all the wrong reasons, the film was a hot topic among writers and directors. A plan which was studiously and diplomatically ambiguous about the status of Miller's version of Barry Allen after this movie drops in June. Gunn also praised this film as one of the best superhero movies ever. And the trailer? Well, both the trailer and the official synopsis of the movie are teasing a reset of some sort, even though the verse that all Barry is looking to restore appears to be the classic DCEU of Man of Steel and Ben Affleck as Batman fame. Here's the official synopsis. When Barry uses his superpowers to go back in time and alter the course of the history in The Flash, worlds collide. But when his attempt to save his family unintentionally changes history, Barry is stuck in a world without superheroes and General Zod, who is threatening apocalypse. That is, unless Barry is able to persuade a very different Batman to come out of retirement and free a Kryptonian who is being held captive though, not the one he is seeking for. Barry's only option is to run for his life if he wants to save the planet he is currently in and get back to the future he is familiar with. Will the final sacrifice, however, be sufficient to restart the cosmos? What the hell is going on? The most important thing to know is that this film is partially based on the Flashpoint comic by Jeff Johns and Andy Kubert, in which Barry Allen went back in time to stop his mother from being murdered by an unidentified super-powered killer, for which Barry's father was falsely imprisoned. While successfully stopping the murder, he significantly alters the timeline and finds himself in a strange new environment. In the case of The Flash, it would seem that Barry's altering the chronology prevents, among other things, the appearance of Superman as we see in Man of Steel, more on that in a second, but it also seems to have changed other things, as well. But let's start with what we know, in the main timeline of the DCEU where this movie begins Ben Affleck is back as Batman. Not only is Affleck back, giving fatherly advice to Barry to not screw with the timeline, He's rocking an extremely cool-looking blue and gray batsuit. At least we know for sure these scenes take place in the main timeline, but then something happens and Michael Keaton is also back as Batman. Nobody needs any convincing that Michael Keaton is portraying a more mature version of The Dark Knight from the 1989 film Batman and the 1992 sequel Batman Returns. However, it's not really stated that the sequences involving Barry, Barry from another reality, more on that in a moment, and Keaton's Batman, necessarily take place on the setting of Batman 89. Instead, it merely seems like Barry has either discovered a different universe in which his mother lived, but as a result, Superman isn't there to stop Zod's invasion, and other things, like Batman, have also changed. It's even possible that Keaton isn't portraying Bruce Wayne at all but rather a different Thomas Wayne, who lived through the shooting in Crime Alley in the alternate timeline produced by the events of Flashpoint in the comics, and instead spent the rest of his days devoted to avenging the death of his son. Whatever the reason, Keaton's Batman appears to have been inactive for some time, we catch a glimpse of a bloody Batsuit and a long, grey-haired Wayne opening a hidden door. We can see several of his other suits, albeit his main one does appear to be an upgraded version of the Batman 89 outfit. Here are a few noteworthy examples. The one on the far left has two pistol holsters, suggesting that it may have drawn some comic inspiration from the now-canonical Batman Year 2 comic story. It might be from the beginning of this Batman's career, because the Bat logo on it resembles a somewhat stylized version of the one from the 1966 Batman TV series. However, it's also important to remember that Thomas Wayne's interpretation of Batman wasn't opposed to carrying a pair of 45s. Or perhaps it's just a nod to the shadow, a major source of inspiration for Batman, who never shared the Dark Knight's antipathy to firearms and habitually used a pair of automatic weapons to send villains to the hereafter. There's also one with a comics-accurate blue and gray color scheme, which hopefully we'll get when the new DCU Batman and Robin movie. The Brave and the Bold, hits in a few years. But I digress why are there two Barry Allens? 
Who is this supposedly less heroic Barry Allen who is riding along with us? Is this just Barry from another reality in which Nora Allen wasn't killed, Henry Allen didn't go to jail, and Barry had a regular, non-powered life? This could suggest that this timeline is really chronologically set in 2013, which would be consistent with the General Zot and Man of Steel references in the trailer, as well as the fact that he looks younger than Prime Barry, may still be living at home, and has longer hair. However, there's yet another eerier possibility, why is General Zod back? Barry reportedly claimed that his activities led to a world devoid of metahumans. The Flash will be released right around Man of Steel's 10th anniversary, so it makes sense that that is when things first start to deviate noticeably from how they should go, since the DCEU, of which this film is still a part, didn't really go public with metahuman activity until the events of that film. If Clark Kent doesn't leave his quiet existence to confront Zod and his army of Kryptonians, Zod will triumph, and the Earth will be destroyed. Who is Supergirl? As she explicitly addresses herself as Kara, the earlier idea that Sasha Kaye might be portraying a Supergirl who isn't Kara Zor-El can be put to rest. Her origin tale is once again influenced by the Flashpoint comics, where it is implied that whoever captured her after she arrived on Earth, kept her imprisoned and kept her out of the power-enhancing yellow sunshine for her whole life until she is released and powers up. Just keep in mind that Superman, not Supergirl, told the story in the comics, although this appears to be pretty closely following those beats. However, that does bring up a really intriguing idea. Does this imply that Kara has also been present on Earth during this period in the main DCU, albeit in captivity, and that no one has ever discovered her? While Gunn and Saffron have been intentionally vague and cagey about all of this, it currently appears that none of the main DCEU timeline will continue after Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom opens in theaters in December. However, it's simple to imagine how this movie ends with a new DC timeline, in which Kara did not spend most of her life in captivity, but has nonetheless been here all along.